But when you go to your doctor's offices, usually it's a mixed team. You have a whole bunch of people working together to help keep you safe. So a nurse entrepreneur, does anyone in here bake? All right, so we have a couple of bakers. So let's say that you have the best cupcake recipe ever, or the cookie recipe, and you decided to sell it. Does that make you a business owner? Yes. Yes. So when someone becomes a nurse entrepreneur, they take what they know as a nurse, and then they package that and they sell things. Like I sell services, I do a lot of training. And one of the trainings that I teach is actually CPR and first aid. What does CPR stand for? Uh, um, uh, CPR stands for... <laughs> you can phone a friend. Help some, if, if you need help, ask someone. What does CPR stand for? Someone shout it out. What does CPR stand chest for? Chest compression. We say chest compression. Cardio. Well, you see somebody walking you run up the door because they 
ask them call 911. Yes, but I need you to be safe. So it needs to be somebody that you can trust. And so one moment, I got you too. So we check to see if the scene's safe. We get someone to call 911. Let's say you're home and you're with Mimi or Papa. Like, what's your grandma's name? Uh, my name is G Mama. G Mama. Okay. <laughs> not, 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 not the real name, like the play play name. Yes. I'll call my girl Nana. Nana? Ma Mimi, okay. I call my Rolo. And what about you? Mom. Mom. All right, so mom's not responding. She's in the bed. You tap and you shout. You hit those shoulders. I want you to tap on your own shoulders, and I want you to say, hey, hey, are you okay? Hey, hey are you okay? All right, and so G Mama, Mimi, Nana should have said, girl, leave me alone. I'm sleeping. <laughs> but she didn't say anything. Is that like me and your mama? No. So who are you going to call? Do you And don't tell your addresses. Do you know your address? Yes. I need for you, and your teachers are watching, you're going to have to learn your address because if there's an emergency and you have to call, yes, go ahead. Well, apartment has an address. And so Cold. have you ever seen a, have you ever seen a piece of mail? Yeah. No. Okay, so what I want you all to do is if you don't know your addresses, I'm giving you homework. That's what you have to do. Learn your address. It's really important, okay? And you also need to learn your phone numbers. So you're going to call 911, and 911 is going to say, hey, what's the emergency? And you're going to say, hey, no, poor baby. You're going to say, baby bumped his head, but that'll be the next segment. All right, you're going to say, what about Mimi? What are you going to say? Mimi's not breathing. Breathing. Well, let's talk. First, she wasn't moving. How do you know someone's breathing? Check the Check the heart. Check the heart. You have to put your cheeks against your heart. No, you have to put your cheeks against your heart. So here we go, everybody. Take a deep breath in. And then exhale. Didn't you see your chest move? No. no. Yeah. All right, so I want you all to look at me. If you don't see chest movement, the person's not breathing. So when I'm looking, I, don't, I heard someone say, very smart of you to put your ear to their mouth. You don't have to do that. You can just look for chest rise. Is the mannequin's chest moving? No. no. Thank God. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to call 911, and I'm going to say, hey, Manny's chest isn't moving, and they're going to say, are they moving at all? You're going to say no. They're going to ask, do you know CPR? And you're going to say yes, yes because we're going to show you how to do so. <laughs> you know what CPR is? What is it? You have to push on their chest. Yes, and when you push on their chest, all right, when you push on their chest, what's happening internally? It makes their heart move. It starts to do things. It starts to do things. So we got a couple of things. So everybody, okay, you all listen. Hand listen. placement. Don't press on the throat. Don't press on the very end of the breast. You're going to go in the center of the chest. And even if you're small, it's okay because you may have to tell an adult who doesn't know how to do CPR how to do CPR. And I'm going to press so deep, you all. It's going to go bring the chest down about two inches. Oh, whoa. Remember, we have what protecting our, our organs? What bones? Ribs. 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 So we got to press deeply enough to get through those ribs. And if you're thinking you're hurting the person because their heart isn't moving right now, what's happening to their brain? They're, they're, they're not getting any oxygen to their brain or any blood to their brain. So they're going to end up, you know, not being well. So we want to make sure that you do some chest compressions. And it's going to look like this. I want you all to count with me. And we're going to count to 30. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. After 30 compressions. If you know this person and you love this person, you can give a rescue breath. But if it's a stranger, no mouth to mouth. How many of you all are going to put your mouth on somebody who's in Walmart? No. 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 <laughs> if they're, if it's not someone you love, Toronto. you're not going to put your mouth on them. Okay. And so when you're giving a breath, and well, let me rephrase this. When someone's collapsed, their tongue collapses also, and it blocks their airway. 
So we have to open their airway. You open the airway by just tilting the head back. So everybody, there we go, tilt your head back. Ah. All right, but don't fall all the way backwards. But now I also have to do one more thing. I have to squeeze the nostrils. So watch me, I pinch the nostrils, I open the airway, and I give a breath. I'm really not gonna do it. One, and then two. Why do I pinch the nostrils? So, so, when they, um, so when you go to like that, like you don't get So they breathe out their yeah, nose and then we don't want to escape things. We don't Four want to escape minutes. things. So after 30 compressions, how many breaths would you give? Two. Two. Do you give that to somebody you don't know or you don't like? No. 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 Only to me, me, mama, and maybe your siblings. That's about yeah. it. Oh, Anyone oh. else, you just keep doing those chest compressions for. 30 compressions followed by... How many breaths? Two. Two breaths. Everyone say AED. AED. The AED is that shocking device that you see on TV sometimes. Oh, yeah. But this is just a trainer, and it won't shock anybody. So you all are welcome to practice with this. When it comes to the scene, the first thing you do is you turn it on. Okay? I have um, some news for you. We can't use this if someone's chest is um, covered. So you have to take off their shirt. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. You have to cut their shirt. But if you don't, what happens to their heart? It is Yeah, it dies. So we're going to have to expose their chest just so we can save their life. And what we can do is we can do traffic control. Be like, oh, no, it's too many people in here. You go over there. I'm going to stay right here, and I'm going to help you with this AED. And when in doubt, who do you all have helping you here? A Your teachers. Kid. Okay, all right. So I want you to say, turn it on. Turn it on. Once I turn it on, it's going to start talking to me, and it's going to tell me to apply the pads. Can you all see that the pads have a little picture on them? Yes. All right, and so this one says high right, and this one says low left. And I'm going to give you opportunity to practice in a few moments. All right, so high right, low left. All right, so you told me to turn it on. I'm really nervous. What do I do? Turn it on. And then from there say, just listen. Just listen. Just listen. Just listen. <laughs> what do I do? Yes. All right. So everybody, the Heimlich maneuver. You want to make a fist 
and take the thumb, the knuckle of your thumb, and go above the belly button. You're going to practice on yourself right here, okay? All right, and then you're going to cup your fist with your free hand. Good job, everybody. All right, and I want to see you do upward thrust. And you do this until what happens? They spit it out. Until they spit it out. So you literally go behind them to do the Hamlet maneuver. What if it is a baby? <gasps> what do you do for a baby? You put one arm. You put one arm. Uh, well, it was not breathing when it was born. And you have to take it. You have to call 911. Okay, all right. What about you? Pat the baby on the back. So everybody watch this. I am not suffocating the baby. My hands are open. This is a choking baby. And the baby, you can tell about they're struggling to breathe. Then you sometimes, whenever they get too much formula or something, or they're drinking their formula laying down, or they could have put something in their airway. So you want to make sure prevention. You want to make sure you don't put things on the floor that they can put in their mouth. You're going to have them with their face down, and you're going to hit their back five times. After that, you're going to flip them over, and you're going to do five chest thrusts. So it's five and five. You all, my baby's choking on something. What do I do? Five, 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 five times. One, two, three, four, five. Turn it over. Turn it over. And yeah. One, two, three, four, five. Why is the head lower than the feet? Because you're holding him upside down so he can spit it out. Oh, I this one right here is a genius. All of you all are geniuses. All right, so you all, I got bad news. The baby stopped moving. <gasps> He's dead. What do I have to do? CPR. So we showed you how to do CPR on an adult. No. You can also, and when I showed you how to do CPR on an adult, that's how you do it on anyone who's older than one years of age. So that would be for adults and children. Two hands there in the chest. When it's an infant, it's not two hands. Two fingers. And where do I put those two fingers? In the center of the chest. chest. Okay, and it's going to look like this. What number do I count to? Five. Thirty. No, thirty. Thirty for CPR. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. If you were going to give a breath to an infant, what's blocking their airway? Their tongue. Their tongue. But if you put your mouth over their little tiny mouth, you really can't squeeze their nose because it's too small. So you put your mouth over their nose and mouth. If you know them and you love them, I saw your facial expressions. If you don't want boogers in your mouth, don't do this, okay? But you do have to call who for help? And at least do those chest compressions. And if you're not going to get breaths, you don't stop. You just keep doing those chest compressions. And when I'm compressing, what am I what am I circulating inside the body? The air, the air that's inside that red stuff. What's the red stuff? Blood. blood. It's the oxygen in the blood. Can you all use an AED on an infant? No. Yes. Yes. You can use an AED on everybody. On an animal only if they're probably a smaller size, but and then we have to worry about the hairy chest. So I don't know if we can use it on an animal without really shaving them with all that fur. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, so everybody. Put, so you put one on the baby? Yes, we're gonna put one on the baby right now. Uh, oh, all right, yes, sir. Um, so about about the baby choking. Mm-hmm. Um, it's these little things pump. We I saw that. Yeah. Most of us don't have it. And if you see the object, let me go back. If you see the object on anybody, you can try to remove the object from their mouth. I didn't tell you that. But that suction, that suction like thing, it looks like a, um, for me, it looks like a plunger. That plunger device, I've seen it, but I would not purchase one because this is free and it works. Yes, sir. Um, so, what happens if you can't put it on the baby and the baby is too small for it and the baby is suffocating? Because it's too right, So I'm going to show you what to do. You're talking about the chest compressions or the AED? The um, chest. The chest. So two fingers. That, that means that we should be able to compress deep enough. And I want to make sure I understand your question. So I said one more time. I said, because what happens if the baby is too small for it? 
are too big for it because the baby gets soft. Oh, well, we're, you can still shock the baby, whether they're too small or too big. You're going to tell me exactly what to do. Everybody, the baby has choked. The baby's not moving. I tried to do the back slaps. The AED arrives. What do I do? Press the green button. Turn it on. Turn it on. Apply pads. Now, I will apply the pads next to, flashing light. to the front of the mannequin or the baby and the back because apply the pads, pads can't touch. Once the pads are placed, what do I do now? Plug it in. Can I touch? No. Say clear. Clear. It's, the baby's going to get shocked, but it's shocked in order to save his or her life. Charging. Still can't touch. But I can touch this machine. What do I press? But don't look around. Okay, got to press it hard. Oh, we just can't keep looking at the baby. What do we do now? Take it off. Keep it on, but do CPR. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, and thirty. You would keep doing that. You would not turn off your AED. But I'm turning it off for classroom purposes only. Yes. Oh, you're totally right. Cut right there. You said the cut? Yeah, the big. So here. But remember, you can't turn around. Oh, so that's just his, his skin. Right. And so that it's just a mannequin. So it's like his fleshy skin. So it really, really wouldn't be a cut there. But if a baby had a cut, what would you all put on the cut? Band-aid. Band and if it's a big gash, you're probably going to have to use like a t-shirt or something to apply pressure. But you're going to be calling who? Mom? Nine, 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 nine. Nine. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off my camera. How many minutes do we have left? I'm um, sorry, at nine, they said 30 minutes? Yeah, 30 minutes. It's 10 24 now. So we got five minutes to practice. Let me turn off this camera. Right, stay looking that way, stay that way. Continue to look that way. Teron, come here. 